Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Matt's Mindset Monday. And today we get to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that's leadership. And um, leadership is really all about influence. And you all, if you've listened to my show before, then you know I'm a big fan of John Maxwell. I've gone through the John Maxwell certification. I talk a lot about the five levels of leadership because I truly believe that leadership is not appointed, it's earned. And it's it's really having a certain heart is what makes really great leaders and people who can um, organize a, a, a group of people towards a common goal. That's that's the principles of, of leadership. And today I'm going to get into a conversation with one of the, the best leaders that I know, Mr. Ben Crenshaw. He's a fellow team leader at Keller Williams, um, and it has a long history of leadership, um, everything from, from inside the real estate world and outside the real estate world. So Ben, I'll let you do a quick little introduction of who you are and what you do. All right. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, my name is Ben Crenshaw. Um, I am currently the team leader at Keller Williams Experience Realty in Western Kentucky. You know, we have three offices, Paducah, Murray, and Edible. Uh, before this, and I've literally been in a leadership position since I was 22, and I'll date myself and let you know that's been 32 years of leadership. Uh, I, I started out as a lowly uh, shoe store manager, and then we grew, and uh, that was, I can't remember how far back that was. But we grew, uh, grew three or four different stores with a company called Shoe Sensation. Uh, my father and I bought a two-way radio dealership in 1994. And we, we had that two-way radio dealership covering Western Kentucky for till 2011. I can't do math this morning, Matt. I apologize. So <laughs> uh, it's, it's Monday. We're just it, is Monday. it is Monday. That's right. But, uh, but yeah, we, uh, I really enjoyed that. You know, we had, you know, 10 or 12 employees and we were all, you know, did everything from service to sales. So it was, uh, it, it was a good, uh, good company to be in and grow in. Learned a lot about leadership there, actually. It was, uh, his dad and I kind of went in it a little bit green and we, we came out of it, you know, in pretty good shape. So, and, you know, now I'm here at the wonderful Keller Williams and get to meet beautiful people like Matt. And it's, uh, you know, it's a great place to be. I love it. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right about that. Um, so two things before we get into leadership talk. Ben Crenshaw is also a famous golfer. How many mm -hmm. times I, I've heard some of your stories. Tell me <laughs> about, a, tell me, a, tell our audience a really great Ben Crenshaw mistaken identity story. Oh my gosh. I got two that pop out because I am a golfer myself. Um, 2017, I went to the Masters on a round. Uh, Saturday round, so moving day, and of course, when you go to the Masters, you you buy a chair. I don't know if Matt, if you've been, I, thought, I think you said you had. You buy a chair. No, I actually have never been. I've been trying to get. No. I'm on 18 years of rejection for tickets. Yeah, <laughs> I, I lucked into one, so but it, I'm still paying for it. I think for four years ago, but nonetheless, I uh, you buy a chair and you put your name in the chair in the back, like in a business card holder. And nobody's going to sit in it, touch it, or move it when you put it in a certain place. There's actually people there in place to make sure that doesn't happen. And, of course, I put my name in my chair in the morning, and I went to follow Jason Day. He was first to tee off that day. Uh, I put my chair at Amen Corner, which is at number 12 tee box, and walked around, got some lunch. And by the got to my chair, there was just a large crowd of people standing around my chair, like I had to fight to get to it. And then when I sat down, it was just a collective, oh because they were expecting Ben Crenshaw to come sit in that chair when essentially it was just the lowly, this guy right here. Um, so, so that was, that was kind of interesting. I did those sign four autographs while I was there because people said that they wanted Ben Crenshaw's autograph from the masters and they got it. So. <laughs> hey, hey, they didn't say which Ben. They That's right. <laughs> There's nothing specific. So I signed it. And another one was I got to play uh, TPC Sawgrass where of course they play the players championship. Yep. And calling down there was really interesting, you know, to try to get tea times for Ben Crenshaw. And of course, Mr. Crenshaw, I don't know why you're calling the front desk. Why didn't you call? <laughs> you know, was, and, yeah. uh, and then the guys they grouped me with were really interested to see who Ben Crenshaw was also. So that, that's two of my favorite. And, and then I got to play in a pro-am, and that was really fun with the name Ben Crenshaw also. Uh, oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. really fun. Sawgrass. How'd you do on 17? So, oh, I'll part it. Yeah, I just, it's really not that hard of a hole. Like, I mean, I'm, 
No, I'm not playing under tournament conditions. Probably yeah. as far as they were playing, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I got to I, I got to play from the from the from their tee box there, which of course it's only 100, 135 yards, but yeah, it's a little ominous. I can't imagine playing it with you know fifteen thousand people breathing down my neck with a with a wedge in my hand, having to hit it in a certain spot. So. Yeah, I think it was playing <laughs> 25 when we played down. They might have just had them pulled up or something. But yeah. So let's talk about leadership. Um, all right. You, you had talked about 32 years of leadership, and I'm gonna we're gonna get into what is leadership and all that. But really quick, that just stuck out to me, so I got to ask: Are you the same leader today that you were 32 years ago? No, I would say I'm a different leader than I was a month ago. Yeah, and that's so. The reason I ask, I get asked this all the time. People say you're either a natural leader, or it's a learned trait, and I 100% believe it's a learned trait. Um, mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? I agree with that. I, I think you have to have some natural abilities to do it but i think yeah. uh, just like with any ability you have to you have to uh, grow with it because you hit ceilings if you lean on abilities only so yeah no you're you're exactly right be purposeful mm -hmm. behind what you're doing and then you can absolutely elevate anything just like golf we were talking about golf earlier you know definitely just like you get better at golf you can get better at leadership as well so absolutely what is, what is leadership to you leadership to me leadership to me is really um guiding and influencing people and, and helping it's really helping those around you is that you really have to as you mentioned before you have to have a servant heart and you have to be caring because if, if you don't care people will see it and they'll know it and it's going to be hard for them to you want to agree with or follow you if you don't care and truthfully here i've got 75 agents in my office and you know six or seven staff and i truly care about love every one of them like their family and I can't help it. That's just me. <laughs> I, no, I, know, I know that. Uh, about you. And I know you got a big service heart. I'm actually, I was just reading the quote back behind you, who will walk the extra mile, a leader who is, a leader is one who knows why, knows the way, shows the way and goes the way. And I love that. Just out of curiosity. Is that a quote that's been up for a while? Do you switch it out or? I, this, I switch it out. This one's been up for a little bit, but it's also our quote I have on uh, where we post our ALC pictures. Um, so oh. it's it's our kind of our ALC tagline for lack of better words. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. I, I, that, that's one of my favorite quotes around Love leadership. That. Mm -hmm. Love that. And what do you think? What are the characteristics that that you think make a great leader? And there's a lot. I think a huge one. You know, I, I, I do glance at notes, so I apologize. But you have to be really understanding at all at all times. I think you have to be understanding. You, you know, you have to be very kind. You have to be able to compromise. Um, but I think one of the most important things you have to be self-aware. You have to know where your strong suits are and where your weak points are, because I think uh, great leaders surround themselves with great people, and uh, you know, that way everybody can help cover. You know, you, you cover your strengths; they cover your weaknesses. If that makes sense. So totally makes sense. And I, you know, speaking of that, real quick, is I think that that's one of the biggest things. So when I first started my leadership journey many years ago, before Keller Williams, is in the beginning, I tried to be all things to all people. And mm -hmm. there's something about that where it's not genuine. Um, you know, it's, and people, people first, and going back to what you said, people want to know that they, that you care. People mm -hmm. don't necessarily know that you know everything. They just want to know that you care. And then do you have the resources to be able to get them the information they need? And in the beginning, I was like studying all this. Even when I was with Toyota, I was studying the Toyota way. And I felt like I needed to know everything about Toyota. And, and you know, when I got into real estate, I felt like I needed to know everything about real estate in order to be a good leader. But the actuality is I need to know certain areas of each of those companies, the areas that I that I be, chose to become the expert in um, instead of just being the jack of all trades and master of none. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to be the source of the source sometimes as yeah. opposed to the source. Well, yeah. like that. Source of the source. I'm writing that down. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, And it's hard because you want to be everything for everybody. And mm -hmm. But it's, um, you know, it's almost like, you know, I, I don't want to sound odd, but it's like being a parent. You want to be everything for your child, and sometimes you can't be. You know, it's, yeah. you, you gotta, you've got to learn what you can and can't do. Um, but at the end of it, when you go back to characteristics, I think integrity is huge. Um, yeah. You, you got to be strong, strong in integrity, strong in character. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, because I think it goes back to that in the word that I would throw in there is, is genuine. Like I said it a second ago, mm -hmm. but when you when yeah. you're in integrity and you're in alignment, you know, your strengths and weaknesses, then 
you know, then you're your genuine self and you can genuinely help others because that's what leadership's about. A lot of people get in first get into leadership. They think it's all about, you know, uh, you know, I'm getting into leadership to better myself. Well, the actuality, the successful leaders are getting into leadership to better others. And yeah. when you and when I say getting into leadership, I don't even mean assigned position. I mean, you know, you umpire. So when you lead your crew, you know, I don't know if there's a title for that or if you get extra pay or anything, but you're leading that crew in order to, to run the best game that you possibly can in that moment, right? So Absolutely. I think it's huge to do that. And, and that's where that servant's heart comes from and, and just having a passion for helping others. And the great thing about it is when you help others at a really high level, you get everything you want as a byproduct of that. And Absolutely. a matter of fact, when I learned that, because I, I got into leadership at a really young age. I mean, I, I was I was in a leadership position leading others at 21 years old. And I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, hey, yeah, sign me up. I'll do it. I'll be a supervisor. Sure, why not? <laughs> right? Uh, but it wasn't. And then for then, then once I started realizing, hey, doesn't matter what I do. It's how do I get this group to maximize their potential that I started to see, you know, real results from that. Yeah, yeah, you actually have to grow people around you. Yeah, I think you're right. A lot of people, when they get into leadership, they they also tend to think that they're doing okay. You go do this now. You go do this now. You go do this. They they think of the boss mindset instead of the leadership, leadership, leadership mindset. Yeah, and yeah, and and, and I, I know I started into that when I was in the shoe business. I was thinking, well, I'm the boss. I just tell people what to do, and I sit back and watch, which did not work very well. And, so when you first started leadership, did you feel like you had to do everything perfect? I mean, I'm, just, I'm speaking from the so I felt like I had to be the perfect person when oh, I first absolutely. got it. And it's now. Not. And okay, it's pressure you put on yourself. It's not pressure other people give you. It's pressure you put on yourself, I think. I don't. But yeah, I think you have to do everything. I feel like you have to do everything perfect. I agree. 100%. Yeah. And then as I matured in my leadership journey, if you will, I recognized that the flaws or the imperfection that I had, even in leadership and as a person, because nobody's perfect, myself included, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the more relatable I was because I wasn't portrayed as this, this perfect thing that, that had no flaws. Like, okay, well, I can relate to this person. I'll go follow this person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to follow you if they can relate to you. You're exactly right. If you put yourself on a pedestal, then you're, you're going to struggle. So as a leader, how do you motivate yourself? So it's, that's an interesting question because I, I like to, I don't like to use the word motivation in this. I like to use the word discipline. Oh, there went one of my AirPods. So if you discipline yourself to do the same thing and the certain things on a daily basis, um, you're, you're going to get them done. Um, but, um, you know, it's, you know, I, I feel like, you know, but still at the same time, I do get motivated because I love to learn. And anytime I learn, even doing what we're doing today, you know, I'm going to learn from this. You know, it, it, it gives you a little kickstart. You know, there's things like when we go to family reunion, you kind of know what you're going to get when we go to family reunion. But when you leave, you're kind of fired up a little bit. Right. Oh, yeah. So that's I. Uh, but, but on the day to day basis, I think that I, I think you have to change that to discipline, because if you, if you need motivation, then I think that's a struggle because I think you have to discipline yourself, especially as a realtor, you have to discipline yourself to lead generate because nobody loves to lead generate. You have to discipline yourself to time block because nobody really likes the time block. You know, you, you, it's hard to get motivated to do it, but I think you have to discipline yourself to do it. And I think that kind of goes into with what we do also as leaders. We have to, we definitely have to discipline ourselves to do things on a day-to-day -day basis. So I read a, I think I read a book or listened to a podcast one time, and I'm so glad we're having this discussion because I had heard this before and I forgot about it. And you just reminded me that um, one of the problems with motivations, it, motivation is you're not always motivated. Right. So motivation might run really high. So I might be a 10 out of 10 right now, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go after it. I'm going to do my one thing, and I'm going to, I'm going to absolutely crush it. Like if I was a real estate standpoint, I'm going to go do my lead generation and grow the business, and I'm going to focus on that. What happens when you're not motivated? So what happens when you've had a really great quarter and you've made, you know, you, you've made all your clients happy and, and you've hit your goals and things like that? Maybe that motivation's a little less now. So are you going to do the things that made you successful? Probably not. Versus discipline, like what you said, and I love the two things that you said, you know, time, time blocking um, and lead generation. And that's because it's regardless of business. 
those are the two things that you need in order to be successful in my mind in, in any industry, you know, especially mm. real estate. And it's amazing to me how many agents, salespeople, people in other industries, when, I'm, when we're talking about how do you accomplish as much as you can in 24 hours, they don't time block. They don't run a, they don't run a calendar. You know, I'll tell people, Hey, you know, what is your, what do you, what do you need to do to be successful this quarter, this month, this week, whatever. And they're like, okay, I need to go do X. And I'm like, okay, awesome. Pull up your calendar and show me where you have that time blocked off to do X for how many ever hours a week that you need to do it. At least 60% of the people don't have a time block. They might have showings time block. They might have, you know, selling time this or, you know, floor time or, or whatever your industry is. You know, you, you, they'll have that on there, but they don't have that one thing time blocked off. So do you, for your one thing, and I know what your one thing is because I do the same job. Uh, do you actually put that on your calendar? Like what's discipline? What habits do you have that lead to leadership discipline? Well, that's a good question, really, because the, the habits I have start in the morning for me because I get up same time every morning. You know, it's, I'm not an early, early riser like some people. I get up at about six o'clock and I usually plan my day on a notepad between, you know, six and six thirty. Um, you know, there same. you go. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And uh, I, I, I and I try to and I use that in my notepad, you know, similar to what you're talking about. You know, I got mine right here. I kind of use it as a checklist through the day. You know, I, I pull it up. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't do as much digital time blocking, but I do have my, my, you know, I use my Chrome calendar from time to time, but I just make sure that I get this done and, you know, I follow the one thing. I, I do my big rocks and, you know, filter out the little rocks and do what I could get done. But uh, I schedule my day in the morning. Uh, I schedule my meetings in the morning, what I'm going to talk about in any meetings that I have. And I just, I have to do that in the morning when I, it's, it's a, in that very minute. And I, I do it actually while my wife's getting ready. She's doing her uh, devotional that she does every morning. I'm sitting down and I'm doing my my list and then I'm checking in and through the day. I make sure I get everything done that I need to do. Um, and, and then on the Mondays or on Sunday, I actually, you know, block my week of the things, you know, like our 11 o'clock call that we have with the, re, uh, with the national and if we have a regional call and things like that in our, our team meetings here, I have those, uh, you know, blocked out also, but. But I have to do a in the morning. I have to make a list of everything, or there's no telling. I, I may end up in tears sitting on a, you know, bench or something. There's no telling what'll happen. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm the exact same way. And and for everybody that's um, either watching live um, on Facebook or who is listening to the podcast, the one thing that we keep referencing is there's a book written um, called The One Thing. You can actually see it if you're live with me over my right hand shoulder there. Um, and it's written by Gary Keller. There he is, Ben has it up. Mm -hmm. Gary mm -hmm. Keller and Jay Papazon. And, it, and it's an amazing book, by the way. If you're struggling to understand like how to achieve X in life, in business or whatever, start with that book. I promise you it's all about uh, knocking down the first big domino so that the rest of the dominoes fall. What's the one thing that you can do uh, that makes everything else either easier or even unnecessary? So um, it's a really great book. But back to your other point, like I'm a, such a creature of routine. I'm just curious. I got a question for you. I'm a creature of routine where if my morning gets thrown off. I feel like sometimes like I'll recover, but my whole first half of the day gets thrown off. So I like, I do these certain things every single morning. Like my, my wife laughs at me because she's like, you just do the exact same thing every morning. Do you feel like when you get out of routine that you get thrown off a little? Oh, I do. And that could be even something as small as the order of when I, you know, shave and brush my teeth after, yeah. you know, because I mean, I, 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 it's literally I do it in order and I don't do it on purpose you know like you said my wife will make fun of me she goes do you always know you do this this and then this I said, no I didn't but but if I do it in a different order for whatever reason like I'm out of shaving cream and I don't shave that day that morning then it just seems like I'm in a, a little daze for a little bit it's weird but I'll, yeah <laughs> I've gone I, I almost I'm embarrassed to admit this but I will like I got out of my routine once. I don't remember what happened. Like maybe we were getting some work done on our on our bathroom. Or something. something happened, or maybe I just had stuff in my head and wasn't just thinking right. And I got out of order. I got to the office and I realized I hadn't brushed my teeth. And let me tell you, for me, that yeah. drives like I was turning around going home. Like I need to. Get uh, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a huge thing for me. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I think, we're, I think, and I think the natural human tendency is to be a creature of routine. 
for sure. And I think the more routine we can make things, not only our morning and our daily lives, but also our businesses, the more routine we can make them. Like you said, the discipline of doing that same thing every day and do it in the morning when your energy is high, then, you know, I think that's what leads to success. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent, hundred percent. And, and that, that's something you can actually challenge people that push back against scheduling is ask them if they ask them about their morning routine and they probably have one. Oh yeah. Yeah. And everybody you, has one. Yeah, and you it can might not be on paper. Them. It might not yeah. be documented. It might, you might not have alarms mm -hmm. set at certain like, so I'm bad. Like I'll tell you, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this. Man. I have <laughs> my wife, she's listening. She's rolling right now. I have a morning alarm that wakes me up. I have an alarm for to go work out um or go for a walk or whatever it is you know me and her decide we're going to do i have a alarm to get in the shower i have an alarm to eat breakfast and alarm to leave work. <laughs> and then i have a uh my 9 30 growth time alarm like and then all of a sudden it's like my phone's dinging like non-stop all morning just to keep me <laughs> on track so <laughs> yeah, that is funny <laughs> but, hey yo and that's the other thing like i heard you said you do a you don't do digital calendar as much. You do more of like your planner and, and your notebook mm -hmm. and things like that. I, I actually, you know, I, I believe in do what works for you. It's like a database. Yeah. The database you use is the best database in the world for you. And it's same thing with a calendar. If it, if it's paper, if it's your alarm system like mine, if it's, you know, I have, I have a Google calendar that, that people fill up for me all the time. And I do use a digital calendar, but it took me three years to transition from a paper calendar to a digital calendar and that three years i was so confused i didn't know what was going on from being honest so yeah i do like the some. notifications of that google calendar but I, I still have to have my paper mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh so what let's talk so that was routine and discipline and, and motivation if you will um even though we did we know the motivation isn't the key factor there uh what about skills what is there any common skills that you feel like every leader should have and I do. I think um, one, I think the biggest one you can have is listening. I think you have to be a super active listener. Um, I, I've, this is stuck in my head since I was a little kid. My grandmother told me that, you know, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. My granddad used to tell me that. I tell, I say that all the time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's because you should listen twice as much as you speak. Because yeah. you, 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 you can't really help people if you don't know about them. If you're always talking to them, you're not helping them because you don't know what they want. You got to help to help somebody else. You have to know what they want. And that's as little if you're going next door to help your neighbor mow the yard. You got to find out, well, how do you want me to mow it? You know, is there any areas you want me to focus on or not focus on? And then listen, and you know, then you'll be able to do it the way they need it done. And, and that's, I think that's the biggest thing is to be a, a strong, active listener. Uh, yeah, because we all want things done differently. Like my goal, you know, we're both team leaders inside of Keller Williams and mm -hmm. my goals might not be the same as your goals. And that's OK, as long as we're achieving the overall, you know, purpose mm -hmm. behind, the, behind the position, because we do things differently. And if I didn't ask you, you know, the way you wanted something done or, or what specifically was the outcome that you were hoping to reach, how could I guide you on how to get there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And I think, um, I think you have to be a quick thinker. You know, you've got to be able to think mm -hmm. on your feet um, while at the same time you have to be able to process and, you know, do structured thinking as well. I think you have to be very empathetic. You, could, you, yes. have, to, you have to understand the way other people are feeling. You know, come from contribution. You know, and one of our Y4C2Ts, you know, we have to seek first to understand. And uh, I think we have, that's something really strong that you have to do. If, I mean, if you can listen and you can, you know, really... Uh, I hate to use the word feel, but if you can listen and understand where the people you're working with are coming from, uh, mm -hmm. that, that's that, that's a, a giant step right there in, in leadership, I believe, you know, because you can learn how to help them after you can find out where they're coming from. But but if you can't take those first two steps, you're going to you're going to struggle, I believe. Um, and if we've talked about it 100 times, you have to have a servant heart. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you have to get your you can't get your growth. You can't be here for you if you're. If you're in a leadership role for you, you won't be there very long. You know, you have to be there to help people around you grow. And, you know, and without the limelight on you, you want to be able to give the limelight to other people. Yeah, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And you, I want to touch base on the, um, the quick thinking really quick is um, I, I'm one of those people that I, I have the ability to, to make decisions, um, especially if there's 
time constraints and things. But when it's a big decision, I like to really reflect and think about it from multiple sides and multiple angles and, and make sure I'm making a decision that's best for, for everybody. And I had heard this one time and it stuck with me. And, and so I use this when I think it's a big, somebody asked me to make a decision and they need an answer now, then I usually say, do you want my reaction? Or do you want my response? Because that's two different things. I have a reaction to what you're asking me, but please allow me a little bit of time to respond accordingly. Um, and I think that when you recognize that, that's when you can become a really effective, it allows you to quick think, but yet, yet at the same time, put thought in to make sure you're making the best decision for everyone. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I'll treat it like a math problem. You can look at yeah. four plus four and answer it really fast. But uh, if you get a complex algebra problem, you need to go step by step and process it to get the right answer. That's a really good, I, I like that. I'm, gonna, I'm writing that down too. Man, you're just giving me all kinds of little nuggets there today. I love that. So let's talk about one of the big things I believe in leadership is the ability to influence, as I had mentioned. And I know influencer mm -hmm. gets tossed out all the time right now, um, especially in today's world of, of social media. But um, why do you think influence, true influence, not social media influence, not saying that's not important, but like influencing somebody to be the best version of themselves. Why is that important? Well, I think it's good because uh, it, it helps you motivate people. If you're a good influencer, you, it helps motivate people. And it also helps guide them in the right direction. And if nothing else, it helps them. It helps them get that thought in their mind. Does that make sense? You know, yeah. even, if, even if they're that kind of person that wants to always push back, you know who I'm talking about. You know, yeah. they always want to push back no matter how good of advice you might be giving it still puts it in their mind and it's going to make them process it because that came from Matt Brown. So I think I should listen to that. You know, it, it, it may, they may push it back in the in, immediately, but when they leave or the next day, they're thinking, you know, and, and, and plant you that know, seed, right? Yeah, you might not exactly agree with right. that moment, that week, that month, but you plant a seed that eventually sprouts into something. And, and it's, and I, and I say this and I, I hope it doesn't come off the wrong way, but I like to challenge the way people think. Yeah. Because, you know, and I like to get challenged on what I think at the same time. And I think that that's, that's part of influence. So um, I love that, what you just said there. How do you, how do you go about personally, just, just you, your, your leadership style, how do you establish influence? I've watched what you've done down in, in Western Kentucky and, and those, those offices down there. And I mean, it's everybody, every time I get to talk to one of your agents, if I bump into somebody or we're doing an event together or, or something like that, like all your agents love you and you are helping them grow personally and professionally. So how did you establish that influence? Well, um, I won't lie, it took a minute because, you know, I came into this business not from real estate. You know, I came into this business from a business aspect and a management aspect as opposed to a real estate agent. So it took a little bit because, you know, you, you hear the, well, he's not a realtor, yada, 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 you know, it, which I get. I was fine with that. But really I got, because I go into the cares, I, I let them know that I care and, and I let them know that, you know, I, I don't know, but I'm going to learn for you. You know, I'm going to learn what I need to learn for you so I can help you become better at this job. And then I'm also going to help show you things that I know in my 40 years of sales and my 32 years of management that can help you grow your business as a business. Because we have, we have to remember that these, these agents, they're, they're, they're not employees. It's their business, the business and they need to learn how to run their business like a business. And, you know, I took our, our my father and I took our radio business from 5% market share to 98% market share. You know, wow. um, my, the real estate, or excuse me, the shoes, uh, shoe stores I ran, I, we had 30 and 40% increases every year that, that from every store that I ran. And it, you know, it wasn't for me being the diligent dictator. It was me trying to learn who they were that was working with me and putting them in positions of strength instead of positions of weaknesses. And then, you know, and, and that's what you have to do to the, to even when you're in a, a business real estate, you've got to put yourself in a position of strength and you've got to learn those strengths. And, uh, I, and, and I not all that. your people's strengths are the same. No, they they're not all the totally same. Different. No. And, and in a different aspect, I learned that in coaching, you know, I was, I, I became a volleyball coach without knowing anything about volleyball, like literally. And I had to learn how to coach volleyball while at the same time learning how to coach uh, 15, 13 year old girls. Mm. Yeah. Double duty there, double learning. Let that, let that soak in a minute. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so, 
So, uh, but, yeah, wow. But, but you have and to learn, you know, you do have to learn how everybody else learns and you have to learn how you can communicate with everybody, which if you haven't, I'm sure you've used it, but that disc assessment is amazing and learning, learning ways to communicate with people. And, uh, but you, and you, and you have to talk to them on their level. And that doesn't mean a level of high or low. It just means the best way that they can communicate. The best and, way and everybody's to different. understand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you talk about that earlier, you know, plant that seed. I had an agent, she, she actually is a new agent. Um, and I kept, I was talking to her, coaching her, and she always pushed back, pushed back. And about six to eight months into it, she, she called me one day when I was, no, she emailed me. I was actually on a cruise. <laughs> she emailed me while I was on a cruise and I was checking my emails and she goes, when you get back, I just have to tell you you're right. <laughs> That's all the email said. That's all it said. <laughs> and, and, you know, I didn't like that for me. I liked that from her because she right. was, now she was seeing success and, you know, she, and it wasn't just me. She was listening to was other people, but she, things finally started to click, you know, and it takes a minute sometimes. And you oh, have to yeah, understand that. And, and that's where, you know, patience actually comes in. You have to, you have to have a lot of patience. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it takes me, you know, I have to hear something three or four times sometimes before it, before it fully registers and I understand what's being said. So I agree yeah. with the patient. And that goes back to what we were talking about. Key, um, key traits of a leader, key skills, if you will. I throw patience in there. Um, and you, you said it a number of times, but being learning based also, um, I think that that's a huge thing because, you know, like you said, in, in multiple positions in your life, you stepped into those positions not knowing anything about that particular industry or, or with the volleyball, that particular sport, but you're willing to put the work in to learn it. And Pete, that shows up. People see that. And then that motivates them to learn. Um, Absolutely. So. I, I do have a funny story about the shoe sensation. But when I first got into it, I was training to be a store manager. And about three or four months into it, you know, my, the, the guy that was training me, we, we were having a conversation and He's like, you know, you know, the store's doing okay, but you know, are you sure this is for you? You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not feeling it. And I said, and you know, and that kind of gave me a gut punch. So I said, well, give me a couple months and we'll see. And so I said, I want to double up on my, my, my meetings with you is what I told him. I said, I want to double up on our meetings one-on-one. -on -one. And he kept hammering things down on me over and over again, same thing. And one time I was like, I got it. You know, I was like, okay, I understand. And he said, look, You've got two ways you can learn. That's repetition or severe traumatic experience. Mm. So I can keep saying these things to you over and over and over, or I could tell you once and hit you in the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, I, t I choose one. I choose one. <laughs> but in the very next month, we it was a, a spring month in the shoe store, and we had the largest month ever in that store, including during Christmas and Black Friday and you know, two months later, I'm out on my own, and it was, you know, it, whatever he did, it worked. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Hey, sometimes it's that impact that, that makes it stick, you know, so. What, uh, I got two, two more questions for you. Number one, who are some of your favorite leaders that you listen to or watch or things like that? Well, well, that, that's easy for me because I deal with one on a daily basis, and Miss Linda Cecil, she's, she's amazing, and you know Absolutely. Linda well as well. Yeah, um, absolutely amazing. You know, I, I I love Linda to death, and I could I could throw out all the you know authors of different books I've read. You know, you've mentioned John Maxwell. You know, I read uh, Dave Ramsey. You know, Carnegie. There, there's a lot of those books out there. If you haven't read Go Giver Leader, it's an amazing book to read. Also, um, and for those that know me that are listening, yes, I read it. I'm a terrible reader. <laughs> I'm just terrible, ter terrible. I'm more of a audio book. Yeah, but um. And I do follow you a lot also. I, I, you're one of my favorite leaders as well. Uh, oh. I can return that compliment. And, um, but, but really, and this may also sound a little cheesy, but, but Gary Keller, if you, if you can't put him in your list of favorite leaders, you're, you, you need to read because he's, uh, I mean, he does it well and I think he does it right. So it's, uh, I, I like listening and following anything that he says, even mm -hmm. if something as small as little Facebook post quotes that he puts out every so often oh they're so good i mean yeah, they're they just, are. every time it's like it hits me right where i needed to hear it at that mm -hmm. moment it's amazing it, 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 it almost feels like he's he's listening to your thoughts and then it, yeah, he he's like, out and it's, to you and I, yeah. that's a great leader though right like he can he has such a pulse on the market the company you know all that that he can put out a general statement on a social media account and you feel like he's talking directly to you absolutely 
Absolutely. So, so I, I would definitely have to say that, um, you know, it's probably my group of, of favorite leaders. And, and that has evolved. I've had a lot of favorite leaders, you know, in, in my time. And I learned a lot of leadership from my father, who had no training in leadership whatsoever. You know, he had and experience. Uh, he, had a, he had a lot of experience. And, um, you know, and the biggest thing that I take away from him, I still, when we're in the two-way radio business, of course, uh, you know, two-way radios cost anywhere from a thousand to five thousand dollars a piece. You know, you can go down to an inexpensive one of five hundred dollars a piece. But he uh, he said you, you treat the person that's coming in to buy a battery the same as you are the person that's coming in to sign a five million dollar contract. Mm -hmm. You treat them exactly the same. They're the same on your schedule. They're the same when you're talking to them. You give them the same time, the same attention as you do. You know, they're, they're the same because that battery guy can turn into the $5 million guy. Absolutely. And you, so you always treat them the same. You know, it doesn't matter what they look like when they walk in the door, you treat everybody the same. Yeah. And that's, I love that. that's been I love one of the that. biggest things for me, you know, going forward in leadership, you know, cause you, we, we all judge a book by its cover. I don't care what, what, what right. your, your forward thinking is or how your mindset is, but everybody can look at somebody and you're going to get a, an opinion immediately. It just happens. It's, it's really hard, but how you project yourself when you're talking to that person is, is hugely important to that person. So, and I think it goes back to what you said earlier. It's a, the active listening and, yeah. and being able to um, critique without criticizing, I think is another huge, uh, huge part of it. Yeah. So as we, as we wrap up this one, what key takeaways would you leave for our audience? Just anything in, in leadership, a quote, just a couple of key points. What, what do you want our listeners to walk away from today? Well, I, mean, I like the, I like the quote that I have back here that you pointed out that you're one of your favorite quotes too. You know, a, a leader is one that knows the way, shows the way and goes the way. I think that's very true. You know, it's, and you, if you're not willing to do it, it's kind of hard to tell somebody else to do it. You know, if, if, if you're trying to coach somebody on how to lead you in by door knocking, you better be willing to go out there and door knock with them. You know, if, if you're, if you're teaching them the time block, you, you better, you show them that you're time blocking. You pull up your schedule to show it. Don't show up, don't show them somebody else's schedule, you know, show them your schedule. And that, uh, I think that's really important. And I, and I liked what you said about being genuine and how that flows in with everything that we did. You really need to be genuine. Um, and, you know, because it, it, it's going to show and how you care about people and, and you need to be make it from you. It doesn't need to be forced. It needs to be you. I was just about to say that. Don't change who you are. Like even if yeah. you're getting a direction and, and you're being told you need to be this or you got to do this. And I'm not saying don't strive to improve, but don't change who you are as a person, because I promise you, I've, I've done that before, made mistakes before and I was not nearly as effective leader. You know, there's different leadership styles and not any one style dominates or leads best right every single style can be effective it's the consistency behind it is what makes what makes it key so you're exactly right and and anybody and anybody in the line can be a leader and i think good leaders grow leaders you know and that, that's that's usually important and, and if you look at even we go into sports you look at basketball teams sometimes the leader is the guy that doesn't play as much yeah that doesn't mean he's not the leader in the team you know he could be the leader in that locker room all the time so it's you want to empower people. And I think that's something that's, that everybody should take away. Good leaders empower other people. That's a, that's a great takeaway. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, Ben, thank you so much for spending some time with me on a Monday. Um, just a reminder for everybody, next Monday is July 4th. So I hope everybody has a safe and happy Independence Day. Um, enjoy your time, whether it be with your friends, family, um, or at work, whatever you're doing, enjoy your time and celebrate the day. Ben, thank you so much. I wrote down four or five different little nuggets that you dropped. Um, I think you're a fantastic leader. Keep doing what you're doing. And I'm so proud uh, to have you as part of our companies. Likewise. Thank you. As a Happy to be on it. This is, a, you know, you gave me my first podcast. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> we'll do it again for sure. Anytime, buddy. Right. Thank you very much. All right. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye.